my congratulations. Uh, you knocked it out of the park with the script and your direction. It's, it's such Thank a you. great, great film. And I wanted to know, what was it about Jackie's story that just connected with you that you sat down to write the script? Well, um, when I was approached, I was asked if, what I knew about him. And I said, I know the same thing everyone knows. He's brave and he broke the color line and his numbers retired. And what, it's kind of like, what, what more is there to need, do you need to know? And when I started doing the research and realized how monumental it all really was and, and uh, just the, the, his real personal bravery and, and, the, and the scope of it, um, it was, it was kind of overwhelming to think one person really went through all that and did all that. Yeah, when you started to, you know, really dive into the research to, yeah. to write the script and, and of course having, you know, Rachel by your side there and giving her blessing, amazing. Um, but what really shocked you when you started to, to sit down to write and, you know, you wanted to get out there for, for us to see? I think it's obviously a baseball season itself is a grind. It's 100, back then 100, I think 56 games and um, day after day after day of having a get up to the plate and, and perform. But to think that he had to do that under those circumstances every single day, it's not like he had to show up one day here or, or do a, a specific act that, that was gonna happen on Thursday one, one time. It was every single day, day after day after day in a different city and, and it was kind of being on display really and, and having to put up with it. Yeah, right. amazing, just an amazing man. Uh, Chadwick is so fantastic in this. He did such <clears throat> a great job. What was it about him? How did you know he was your guy? Um, Chadwick came in, he was the second person that auditioned for the part and um, there's a very difficult scene in the middle of the movie and he chose that as the first thing to do coming in the room and he was very specific, the, the choice. It was a very dramatic scene and a lot of actors would play it down the middle so that they could stay in the running for the part. And, and um, he chose a very specific way to, to go, which I think was the right way to go, and is how he did it in the film as well. And it was a brave choice because he, he, he easily could have knocked himself out of the running. Um, and I thought he's a, he's a brave actor and he's gonna play a brave man, so. Um, it was a good start and a good indication of his willingness to get get in there and and do what he had to do. And to boot, he you know had a, little, a bit of a resemblance to young Jackie. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wasn't. I, I'm not big on mimicry, so I wasn't necessarily looking for a physical resemblance. But it was a bonus yeah. because he 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 really looks like him, especially at certain times. When you, uh, the certain angles in the film where you think, wow, that's. That's about as close as we could get, I think. Pretty amazing. And then, of course, Harrison Ford, who, you know, kind of bugged you for this role. You didn't have him on, on your radar right at, at, in the beginning, did right. you? <laughs> well, the, the tricky thing with, with uh, Branch Rickey, I thought, was I, I really felt like I needed a character actor to pull off because he's so... Um, he's not a comic book character, but he's, you know, he's, he comes across as this kind of almost comic comic book character with his bushy eyebrows and his, the way he dresses, this old fashioned kind of 19th century look that he cultivated. And um, I just, when Harrison was interested, I thought How, you can't have a movie star play this part because it, he's got to disappear into this part. And as I was telling him this, he was telling me the exact same thing, that he felt like he had to disappear into the part and he wanted to look different, he wanted to change the way his hair looked, he wanted to lose the scar mm -hmm. on his chin that everyone knows so well, um, change his voice, and uh, he was uh, right there with me as far as understanding what an actor needed to do to, to pull off Branch Rickey, so it, it worked out. Yeah. But, but I, I got, I think I'm the only director in, in uh, the history of his career who got, who got Car Harrison Ford the character actor and not Harrison Ford the movie star. So. Well, we're glad that you did, because yeah, no, he, he really pulled it <clears> off. <throat> he did a video. I was asking Chadwick earlier, I said, you know, I know you're making a movie and, you know, uh, but how hard was it? And for you to even watch him do the scene when Alan Tudyk playing the Phillies manager is, 
you know, yelling those racial slurs over and over. And that's pretty intense, that scene. You know, it made me feel extremely uncomfortable. I can't even imagine as a human being how he got through that. Right. Well, that, it's an interesting, from my point of view, it's an interesting scene because I, since I wrote the script, I had done all the research and read the accounts of it um, in sports pages and in history books and things like that. So I came to it by degrees. So I, I read about it, then I wrote it out. I had to sit there and actually write it. Then we didn't rehearse it because we just thought it was unrehearsable in a way. Um, and the, uh, the final thing for me is Alan's a friend of mine. He's been in another yes. film of mine that I did. and. Um, when I called action and it started, it was, it was a shock, even having written it, having studied it, having prepared to do it. Um, and it was, it was an uncomfortable couple of days shooting that stuff. Um, and also with the, with the crowd, with the extras, um, them hearing it for the first time. And um, it's actually very interesting to watch the crowd in those scenes because they're they're not, they're not professional actors, but right. they feel like they are. And I think it's because of the situation they, they find themselves in. But um, it's, a, it's an odd thing to put an actor through because you're acting, but at the same time, it's still being shouted at you and you're still hearing it. And um, it's not, I don't think it can, you, I don't think it's, I think it's very difficult to treat it entirely as a job. Yeah. And I actually had a, a lot of sympathy for both of them, for Alan doing it and for, for Chad hearing it. Um, and when we were all done, it was good to be done. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, but it was very powerful. Uh, you know, of course, started off as a screenwriter. Now you're doing both screenwriting, directing. Who was your biggest influence as a director that made you want to decide to direct? Um, I had two big influences. One was Dick Donner, who I worked for as a writer um, a lot. and. I had directed a several, well, th three movies right away when I started directing, and then I stopped for a while and uh, worked with Tony Scott quite a bit. And it was Tony, actually, who got me interested in, in, in directing again after I hadn't done it for a while. So, and two very different styles, and, but two very um, generous, kind of beautiful people. Um, so, the two of them, I would say. Well, keep up the great work. You know, Knight's Tale still stands out for me as one of my favorite movies. I just oh, love no, that thank movie you, so, yeah. so much. No, I'm really proud of that movie. Yeah. But congratulations on this. You've just, you know, like I say, outstanding job. And I can't wait for people thank to you. see it. It's fantastic. Thank you.